commercial license, we can help them become an instructor. So they get their instructor license and have a job too. Exactly. So you got a lot going on. The VA, the college, and now hiring instructors and future instructors too. Yep. So now can we get the commercial started? Already ahead of you. Call Brad to get your adventure started today at Ocala Aviation. 861-7484. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but I don't go through the drive through at the fast food place anymore. Mm-hmm. Do you know why I don't go through the drive through at the fast food place? Because I don't, I, get, I don't get to experience the food. Because I'm driving, you see. I'm, I'm actually in traffic, and, I, and, and all of a sudden I'll be like half a mile down the road, and I'll say, where's my hamburger? Oh, oh it's gone. I ate it yeah, while I was driving. Right, right. Right, right. <laughs> so yesterday I saw a lady in a restaurant. And she was reading a book while she was eating. And I was thinking, she's not in this restaurant. Whatever those words are in her book, that's where she is. Yes, exactly. She's, she's someplace else. It's, it's kind of like the lady who told us one time that when she was a little girl, she didn't have much money and uh, her family had not, did not have much money. And when she came back from summer vacation, her friends would all say, oh gosh, I went to on vacation to Pennsylvania, I went to, to Europe, I went to these places, and she would say, oh, well, I went to, and she would name Paris, and she would name Greece, and she would name, you know, the, the 1700s. She didn't just travel through <laughs> space, she'd travel through time. And, of course, her reasoning was she would spend her summers in the library because she was an avid reader. It, it is true that the words that we read from talented writers uh, tr- can transform our experience. We can experience what that writer has put down in, on, in writing. Uh, Daniel J. Davis has that talent. He's on the phone right now. He not only has that talent, but he has also served us in the Marines and in the Army. And he happens to be one of the writers who have won in one of these um, events. This is the uh, the. F- the Writers of the Future Award. Is that what they call it, Ron? Yep, the Writers volume of the 31. You would think I would know this by now. Mm-hmm. Uh, his his uh, story is called The God Whisperer, and I believe it's in the collection that we're going to talk to us about, that he's going to talk to us about. Plus, there's a workshop coming up at the end of this month. I don't know if there's still time to get in on this for the local writers who want to learn more about this, but what an opportunity, and uh, I'm, I'm anxious to hear what The God Whisperer is about. Daniel J. Davis. Good morning, Daniel. Hey, good morning, Larry. How are you? Pretty good. Thank you for being on the air with us today. Oh, thanks for having me. Are you from North Carolina? Uh, I'm actually originally from Massachusetts. Uh, I live down in North Carolina now. Oh, is that where you... i got to say, I love it. <laughs> I love North Carolina, too. Is, is, is that where you're speaking to us from right now? I'm speaking to you from North Carolina, yes, sir. All right. Um, so tell me about your, your writing. I mean, have you been writing as uh, when you were a little kid? Were you always writing? Uh, I always uh, wrote a little bit off and on. It was, it was always something I just kind of saw as a hobby. Uh, I, I enjoyed making up stories. Um, and it's because I was just so fascinated by things like what I saw on television. I was like, wow, that's a neat story. So I try to create more stories about those characters in my head. So did you sh- and, share them with anybody? Like give them to your friends? Like, here's my book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I never really tried to write any of them down until... Uh, probably all high school and of course you know high school and middle school you're you're way too paranoid about that stuff to show it to anybody <laughs> so um yeah you don't want to show anybody or, or do you uh I, I when i was a when i was younger no i was i was far too self-conscious about that stuff but uh it's something i kept up even when i was in the military i uh other guys had hit the gym in their downtime and i would be curled up in my rack with uh with a notebook and i'd be just trying to write something down um so it's something that uh, that I really kept up for a long time, and finally got some success with reading. Now, the, the writers of the future is fantasy and uh, what do they call it? Science, Science fiction, fiction and fantasy, right? So is that yeah. is that a genre that you would read, or, or how did you end oh, up yeah. g- getting into that genre? Um, the fantasy side of it, I definitely got into that. I think for Greek mythology, when we started learning about that in fourth grade, I really, really gravitated towards the reading units that were Greek myths. 
In fact, I actually have um, copies of those same retellings on my shelf right now. Uh, an Irish uh, poet named Patrick Collum wrote the ones we used in school. And I've revisited them several times over the years. I've loved the stories of gods and monsters and all this other stuff. That just that fired my imagination. Oh, wow. So the book is called The God Whisperer. Is it a book or, j or a story in the book? It's a short story in the book. There okay. are 13, uh, 13 um, all-new stories from Winners of the Contest, as well as a couple of reprints from one from L. Ron Hubbard, whose name is on the book, and um, two more from Judges, uh, Larry Niven and um, Kevin Anderson and Rebecca Musta. Is, uh, this, uh, is, is this the uh, one particular story that you created just for the book, or did you have a few other stories and you had to choose which one you wanted to submit? This is uh, this is one that I wrote specifically for this contest. I um, I had just heard of the contest actually uh, just before submitting it. I had, I didn't know this this contest existed, much less that it's been around for thirty one years. And uh, so I wrote that and more or less forgot about it because it's one of those things where you write it and it could be a long time before you hear back. So oh, I wrote okay. it, I submitted it, and I got to work on another one. <laughs> wow. Okay. And so, and how long is it? How much? How many pages or words? How do you measure a book with words? Right. We typically measure it with words. My uh, word count. Uh, this ended up being about twenty six hundred words, which translates to about six pages. Mine's actually the shortest one in the book. Is that right? Wow. And so, so you send it in, and what do they do? Phone you and say, "Hey, we we like your story. We want to fly you to L.A." Uh, that's exactly what happened. Actually, uh, I got a phone call from Jonah Lubaki first, informing me that I was a finalist, which I. I didn't expect even to get that far, let alone let alone to win. So and then so she called me and said, You're one of eight finalists. Um, you'll be hearing in about a month. And a month or so later I get another phone call and I was you know, she says, uh, Daniel, this is Joni and the first thing I said is, Oh, hello Joni, is this good news or bad news? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> so had I hate So had you been sent had you sent anything to any publishers ever before? Um, I had sent some things to other publishers before, yes, and honestly, um, I collected a stack of rejection slips like any, uh, any writer does. Okay, so that's why you were thinking nothing's going to be any different with this one. Mm -hmm. Yes, but they also tell you you just have to keep trying until you succeed. So, yeah, yeah. so that's what I was up to, and I mean, this I had gotten published in some small amateur publications here and there, but nothing, nothing of the status or prestige of this. This was just far above and beyond anything I'd ever reached for. Yeah, this is and huge. And actually achieve it was, yeah, to actually achieve it was amazing. You know, we, we've, we've spoken to a few authors who've entered into this contest, and uh, I don't think I've ever heard, and maybe it went in one ear and not the other, but you said they've been around 31 years. I didn't even know that. That's an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. we, always, we always try to convince or persuade, not convince, but persuade authors who we know, and we have a lot of listeners who are in this category. To look into this, especially, if, well, I guess only if you're a science fiction and or fantasy writer, because that's what this contest is about. But I love the fact that you don't have to pay to enter it. Yes. It's not, they're not trying to make money from your entrance fee, which a lot of contests are doing that, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, and quite the opposite. They actually spend a good deal of money on you, because in addition to publishing the book, which costs, you know, they recoup the costs on that, of course. But, I mean, there's the workshop in Los Angeles. They fly everybody out there. It's expenses paid. I mean, the only thing you really have to cover is your food. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, uh, I mean, they, they, put, they put you up in the hotel. They fly you out there. And the workshop is with some top professionals in the field. I mean, authors that I've admired for years, like Orson Scott Card. And, I mean, these people and uh, Larry Niven, they come up to speak to us. <laughs> and that is just so, so positive, and that's opposite of what you had growing up with your teachers. They tried to dissuade you from watching television and things like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, and they say that rocks, you know, a lot, especially when I was a kid. Uh, the teachers, uh, I had one teacher in particular who was always like, television rots your brain. Well, for me, it was the opposite. It, it forced me to ask questions and imagine possibilities that, and it stimulated my brain. <laughs> right, it fueled you. It did. It absolutely did. All right, so let me, let's I say, wanted to 
I wanted to do what they were doing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I love that. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll take a little break, but uh, just re- to recap, um, that Daniel J. Davis is on the phone. He wrote a story, six pages or so, called The God Whisperer. It's included in the uh, Writers of the Future, Volume 31, the L. Ron Hubbard Presents Writers of the Future, Volume 31. The, well, right there. I would have known 31 mm-hmm. years if I thought about it. Um, and the book actually went to number one on the Barnes & Noble trade paperback list. And I think that's a first for them. Yeah. So you're in a number one book. So we'll take a little break and be back with Daniel Davis after the break. This is The Source, WOCA O'Callaghan. Weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Partly sunny, a thunderstorm this afternoon with a high 89 to 92. It'll be clear tonight, low 71 to 75. And then sunny tomorrow, thunderstorm for the afternoon, high 88 to 91. Tomorrow night, it'll be partly cloudy, low 72 to 76. Partly sunny on Wednesday, a shower, a thunderstorm, high 86 to 92. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Steve Williams. If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy, never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results and all but given up on my sex life. Then I found the doctors at New Mail Medical Center. Wow, they made a new male out of me. Feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor, so much more energy, and no longer worry about my performance. New Mail treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Mail will help you. Call New Mail Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779 garden and we've got a show for you called you've got a garden with your host master gardener carol ann baldwin carol ann answers your questions about your flowers your veggies your grass your trees even questions about your bugs and she's only on woca so don't miss carol ann baldwin and you've got a garden each tuesday from 9 a.m to 10 a.m right here on woca the source Career Source, Citrus Levy Marion, brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent, and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first and third Wednesday of each month at 9.30 a.m. to Career Source, Citrus Levy Marion, and learn how they can help you. That was the sound of a tree falling. It could be your tree. You're going to have it trimmed, but never got around to calling Pride Tree Service. It could have fallen in a field, and now all you have to do is call Pride Tree Service, and they'll have it quickly out of the way for a great price. But don't wait until the tree falls. It may not fall in the field. It may hit your car, your house, or worse. So call Pride Tree Service today and avoid all those headaches before they happen. Pride Tree Service, 840-0750. That's 840-0750. We are the source. WOCA. New talk, sports, and more. All right, 18 minutes after 11 o'clock. Th- this morning I was watching a video, and it showed this car. I think your brother posted it, Robin. Did you see this video? The car pulls out of the, j- the garage, drives down the road, and then it flies away. Oh, I didn't see that Did one. you see the video? No, I didn't. So, so, I mean, we've always heard about flying cars, but I think we're getting closer and closer to them, and, and who knows what else. And, and a lot of these things do come from the minds of, of writers. It's, it's an amazing thing, really. When you think about how we as a world come to be, everything is, you know, when you look around, I've heard this, I'm not the originator of this thought, but when you look around, look at this microphone, look at those windows, look at the bricks, look at the building. Everything started out as somebody's idea. Yeah. You know, it starts out as a thought and 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 thoughts are able to be put into words Mm -hmm. you know or into into plans um and sometimes we uh have our thoughts and plans and and ideas catapulted by people who have imaginations and those are of course the writers daniel davis is on the phone the book uh, rather the um the story he wrote is called the god whisperer it's in the book L. Ron Hubbard Presents Writers of the Future, Volume 31, which before the break we told you it's reached number one yes. uh, on the Barnes & Noble trade paperback list. So, Daniel, is in uh, North Carolina. You're in Winston-Salem? 
Yes, sir. That's a c- cigarette town, right? Winston Salem. Yes. <laughs> Do they still make cigarettes there? Um, from what I understand, no. They uh, they closed down the RJ Reynolds plant. Here, oh, they did. So it's uh, being renovated and turned into uh, office park space. Oh, okay. Uh, was there an illustrator assigned to you after you uh, won the contest? Uh, there certainly was a young man named Alex Brock, who uh, I got to say did a wonderful job. I would never even have imagined somebody could take something that I wrote and come up with something so vivid, but he did. <laughs> the, the young man is very talented. Are you going to make it make this into a series of short stories? Um, I've toyed with the idea of expanding on this because I the God Whisper touches on some themes. Um, about uh, adoption, mainly mm-hmm. adopting dogs. Um, the genesis of the story just came from me flipping the words uh, dog and God in reverse. So the God Whisperer helps people with their undisciplined, nasty little pet gods. <laughs> so it, <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I envisioned a world where instead of forgotten dogs, um, people can go to the Humane Society and adopt a forgotten god. And the man in my story has adopted a uh, little god named Zuar, who is a forgotten and ancient god of war, who has a terrible attitude, and destroys his house. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, wow. Oh, this is a cool wow. concept. I had no idea what the, that's what this is, was about. Um, my goodness. And, and so that does sound like a, an expandable idea. And it's mainly a comedy. I, I was primarily trying to make people laugh, but at the same time, I wanted to kind of draw attention to what it's like to adopt a rescue dog and the dog the character in the story was inspired by our own rescue dog uh chihuahua mixed named pepe who we adopted when i was stationed in hawaii and uh he was found wandering the streets of honolulu flea bitten starved and Aww. his day-to-day attitude most of the time he's okay but when he has a when he's in a mood he's in a mood <laughs> oh wow it says it says here that you are a disabled uh, army veteran were you uh, hurt in the in the in battle I was uh, medically retired for uh, post-traumatic stress disorder after nine years of service and three tours in Iraq. Oh, I see. Three tours it in Iraq. Got, wow. Wow. It it just got to be it got to be a lot, and I thought I was actually suffering from symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder after my first tour, but I didn't recognize it. Oh, um, you're you're a good-looking guy. I'm looking at. I think this is yeah. This is you. I'm looking at a picture of you. Robin handed me a like a photocopy of a picture of you. And the, and the Writers of the Future uh, cover uh, of the book. Um, so you went out. You went out to LA one of these days, Robin. You got to see what this whole area looks like. Where, where yeah. was where was the um, the actual award ceremony? The award ceremony was, uh, was at the uh, Ebel Theater, the Wilshire Ebel Theater in uh, Los Angeles, which, as I understand it, is where they do. Uh, I think they do the Grammys there. Something like that. Oh my gosh! So were you aware that you? won this award out of all the other entries or how how did that come about well well when you enter um it, there's uh four quarters and once you've entered for the quarter they close it off and they judge the top three stories of that quarter from what i understand it's out of thousands of entries uh they don't tell us how many they get but the the underground rumor of people who have been entering for years is uh it's about between three and seven thousand per uh, per quarter. Now, don't quote me on that. That might not be an accurate number. <laughs> <laughs> so, for but, but the, the contest has confirmed thousands. Their exact words are thousands of entrants, and that's all they say. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, the contest. And let's tell the listeners about that because we have listeners who are authors. There's a, is there a workshop coming up at the end of this month? Is that right? Uh, yes, they've actually just opened this workshop to the public, and it's the first time they've done that. And quite frankly, this is an amazing opportunity. Had I not won the contest and gotten this workshop already, I would be paying to go. Okay, um, so so uh, just just fill us in on on the the book itself. When and then we'll talk about the workshop. When you and, and I hate to talk money, but I mean you you get paid for this, right? I mean you get royalties. You certainly do. Uh, not royalties. That's not the way it works. But what you do is you win a um, there's a grant. Uh, Alan Hubbard started this foundation 31 years ago. So the the uh, prize winners for each quarter get a grant for uh, it's in the form of a cash prize for their story. I see. Then when the book is published, you get paid at a professional rate, uh, six cents per word. So 
my story netted me about one hundred and thirty-seven dollars <laughs> in addition to the, <laughs> the prize money. Oh, oh uh, okay. <laughs> oh wow! But it's but it's but it's important to note that that's pro rates for the science fiction writers of America, and it's considered a qualifying market for membership. Yeah, well, well. Plus, all those all those publishers that turned you down once before are start, starting to take note again. Have you had any contact from any of the others? No, but I did sell uh, I did sell another short story to uh, Galaxy Press, which is a market that I had never tried to sell to before. Oh, oh, okay, excellent. So, I, so, uh, not Galaxy Press, Galaxy's Edge. I'm sorry, Galaxy Press published this one. <laughs> so, does this open the doors for you to go to other publishers like uh, Simon and Schuster, and will you be one up on other people to do it, your submitting? It, it does. When I um, not. It doesn't necessarily move you to the head of the pile, but if they look at your cover letter on anything you submit to them, they see this professional credit here. And in the writing world, this is this is a known contest, and they know how difficult it is to get to this point. So anybody who enters, and anybody who wins, and this is what I want to really stress to your listeners, this is a golden opportunity, and it really buffs your writing resume far above and beyond anything you can self-publish. I bet it does, yeah. All right, so let's see. The, let's see. I... I'm looking for the here it is uh, the 29th and the 30th, uh, and for, oh, I guess it's doing all the thing from 9:30 till mm-hmm. five. W- where did you stay when you were out there? Did you stay in the in a hotel? Where'd you stay? Uh, you know, I, I'm blanking on the name of the hotel, but they did put us in a hotel when we won the contest. Um, wow! It was right around the corner from Author Services, so we could walk up Hollywood Boulevard down to the workshop every day. Oh wow! Did you yeah. see a lot of creepy people on the Hollywood Boulevard? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> uh, because uh, because uh, this uh, uh, workshop is is going to be open to the public, and it will undoubtedly be so successful. Will you be able to take what you've learned and go back to North Carolina and maybe start a, a writers group to help others? Um. You know, it's funny. I was actually contacted by a school librarian the other day who was interested in bringing me in to, uh, on a trial basis to talk to some of the students. So oh my one of gosh. the school librarians around here may want me to do that. She uh-huh. hasn't gotten it approved yet, so that's. But it's it's something that she's at least talking about. Well, that's, that's wonderful. A, a workshop that'll boost your your career if you're if you're trying to be a writer is. I mean, there's no two ways about it. I would I would look into this. Um, it's August 29th and August 30th. Is there a website they can get the details? Yes, go to writersofthefuture dot com, and you should be able to get the details right there. Um, and again, I just want to stress to all your listeners: it's a wonderful opportunity. Um, my second sale, the one that I made to Galaxy's Edge, I only made because I applied lessons that I learned at this workshop. Really? Oh. Hey, and can you share some of those, or at least one of those lessons? So what did you learn that you was like, oh gosh, I never thought of that before. Do you have any of those? I've got plenty of those. One in particular, uh, this is a tidbit that I got from uh, Mike Resnick, one of the uh, judges and one of the instructors. And he said, science fiction is the literature of warning. This bad thing will happen if. Hmm. Wow, that's a cool, cool and I had, thing. I had never thought of science fiction stories in those terms before. Now I think of science fiction stories in those terms every time I sit down to write one. And that was a lesson I applied, and I actually sold that story to to Mr. Resnick, who is uh, the editor of Galaxy's Edge magazine. I see. Okay. And, and the, the God Whisper, does it take that approach? Is there a, is there a warning? Um, God Whisper is more fantasy. Um, so it's really more of a... It's actually got a little bit more in common with an, with an old parable or an old fable. Um, using Using a God who can actually speak to a person as opposed to a dog who basically is at a human's mercy. Okay. So I kind of approached several of the issues associated with rescuing stray dogs. Oh. Well, thank you for... And I approached it from a different side. Thank you for being on the air with us. Thank you for your service. I know you're oh, probably yes. very humble about that statement, but we, we mean it in all sincerity. And good luck with everything. It sounds like you're tapping into a, a talent that's probably been... What's the word? Latent? It's... A, Yes. Dormant, a talent that's dormant. been dormant. You've woke, you've awakened it, and, and uh, it's it's taking you on a nice ride. It sounds like, uh, and and for sharing it with us, because I think what happens is our listeners who are writers become very excited when they hear about somebody else being able to uh, to make this leap into uh, mm-hmm. a, a more successful career as a writer. Uh, Daniel J. Davis, look for his name uh, in in the near future, and right yes. now you can get him in the in the book. 
that is called The Writers of the Future, Volume 31, and it's on wherever books are sold, I guess. Writersofthefuture.com is, is also a website to go to. Number one at Barnes & Noble. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for being on the air with us. Thank you. You guys have a great day. That was a good interview. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Mm-hmm. 